Friday, February 3rd, end of the first week of February, 2023. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning. 9.47 California time. We always start out with the stock market indexes. I'm on the wrong workspace. And here is the overall daily vertical bar chart um, on the Spider SPY, S&P 500. It's a head and shoulder bottom formation, which started in June. That's the first shoulder low over here on this chart. The bottom of the formation, the head of the formation is the October 13th, now relative, very spectacularly, a ER signal, automated buy signal at the bottom of the bear market, which had lasted a year since January 4th of 2022, when we were getting new short sell signals. Now, the last shoulder low was a little earlier than expected. I thought late January, maybe a week or two ago. Instead, it was um, approximately, let's say, just after Christmas. Yeah, between Christmas and New Year's is perfect. And up it went, and it hit some resistance, but it really didn't stop it. The bear trend line, dot dash blue trend line, stopped it for only one or two days. Came down support and at that point i thought we were going to see a little bit lower because i wanted it to be you know late january and the prices i thought were going to be um 370 or a little under so somewhere in that ballpark or a little over didn't happen market started to turn right back and this is only like two weeks ago right back up went through that long-term bear trend line that was extremely well established with several major points on it and the only bear trend line for that long-term bear market lasted a year. We also broke the neckline, the green line, a couple of days later, very quickly, relatively speaking. And now, in the last, the last few days, have managed to have a very substantial rally, new highs for five months, well above a lot of resistance areas, not all of them. And if this head and shoulder bottom, which seems to be working just perfectly, there's nothing really wrong with it at all, does what it's supposed to do. And by the way, contact me at info at ersignals.com if you wish. The minimum upside objective on this pattern is equivalent to the all-time historic highs right around 476, 477. The historic high was uh, 80 and a quarter, maybe. So. Um, got a long ways to go 50 bucks 50 points 60 points something like that but hey 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 we got overbought in the last three days including today today we're overbought yesterday and the day before and a few days before that slightly but now clearly in the overbought territory which often very often <clears throat> It is part of my ER sell signal and buy signal strategy. I do need overbought and oversold conditions, and this is a custom relative strength index. I learned RSI from Wells Waller himself, and I plot it differently and calculate it differently. So when it turns um, below 25, I look for buy signals, which is exactly what happened on October 13th. Whoopee. That is uh, uh, going to go down in history is one of the biggest turns. And it was the October lows, which I started talking about two months in advance. What next? What next? What next? You want to know what's going to happen next? So do I. We are back up to almost unchanged on a rally high, actually a hair higher, but about unchanged. And it's slipping off a little bit, and I'll get to the one-minute chart momentarily. But what bothers the heck out of me is it's overbought. Now, we did open five or so points lower. And I kind of thought that was going to drop off more after maybe a little rally. But the rally that happened was all the way up to unchanged. And we're sticking around approximately that same area. If we close anywhere in today's range, frankly, even around the lows, um, I basically still like what I see. I want a minor downside dip here, maybe early next week to about 40, yeah, I'm going to say uh, 405. 406, 407, maybe to maybe, um, yeah, 400. Probably not below 400. You're going to break the neckline again or test it uh, right on it if it takes all of next week, which it might. 
So that's not impossible. Um, once major breakouts take place, sometimes there is a huge retracement that comes back to the neckline. I think that process already happened a day or two after the breakout, which was on the 26th. Two days later, we dropped below the neckline on a close, but next day it was like a ping pong ball being pushed underwater. It pops right back up again and zoom, zoom, zoom up a big strong day on that one, the next big strong day on that one, and the next big strong day on that one yesterday. So I think it's a little tired momentarily. I I can't rule out another jump in price to 20. Now we're starting to talk some significant resistance if you get up to 420. If you can get up to 420 very quickly, like today or Monday or Tuesday, it's going to be even more overbought, hitting more profound historical resistance, and there's a big triangle. You can't see it very well. I, I lighten the color of it, but it's right at 1921 for the bottom of that resistance zone. So call it 420. And it's not very far away. I mean, we're trading at 15.66, uh, uh, a little 15 and a half. Now, if it doesn't get to 20, fine. I don't mind a correction over a few days. I would expect it to be relatively normal and expected but you're kind of in a little bit of a limbo here. You might have one last shove up to that resistance area that's really important and then fall back a little for a few days. No big deal. Get a good buying opportunity. I'll try to pinpoint that turn if it happens and it will. I'm not sure exactly when and where, but I think I have a handle on it. And then um, up into new high ground again, this is the beginning basically of the bull market of 2023, in my opinion, a test of all time new historic highs and uh, higher, probably. I wouldn't doubt we're gonna see higher new historic highs this year, but probably late and maybe next year, but that's what I'm looking at. It looks great to me. Next, indexes in general. We're dropping down now on the one minute chart on the spider, hasn't broken support, in the last few hours. But it did stop at an interesting level on the way up, which is around that unchanged level and where it had trouble going higher yesterday, except for a half an hour or so, it jumped through it and then it had, couldn't hold it. And it stayed below that horizontal line uh, on the close even, though it was very close. So 416, 17, 417 pretty much flat. Uh, if we can get above that, stay above that, we're gonna see another shot upwards pretty quick i think uh maybe today and it may be um very soon but right now it's sinking a little got slightly oversold on the one minute i know this is real tight detail um and it kind of looks like it's a head and shoulder bottom building but this is a one minute chart come on you gotta know what you're doing when you're looking at you know patterns and real tiny formations and stuff um period so that's very iffy. All right. Lastly, Qs. I'm spending a lot of time in the indexes lately because it's very important long-term. I don't get this chance very often for long-term calls. I like intermediate and short-term calls. We gapped up yesterday in the QQQ. So that looks like now an exhaustion gap. It broke away at the time from a significant resistance area I had in red which did stop the market on a rally several days ago on the 12th. No, that's the 27th of January, sorry, January 27th. That was high, was right against the resistance level right there. And then it pulled back a couple of days and then it blew through it um, Wednesday, but stopped at the top of the zone and it's closed in the middle. Next day, there's plenty of strength here. We're getting that follow through to the upside and a gap in overbought situation. Now, that's a recipe for exhaustion gap, minor high. Sometimes if that was the top of a very, very, very big multi-month whopper of a rally, I might say it would be a possible island top coming up or a exhaustion gap for a very big correction. Not the same here. This has gotten mildly overbought. It just broke out two weeks ago from its head and shoulder bottom. It's coming along just great. And I might point out that the minor upside objective on this pattern has already halfway up. We've already gotten halfway up in the minimum 
upside objective measurement for the head and shoulder bottom and the QQQ. That's interesting. I didn't realize it had gotten that far that fast. Now, it tells me that we're highly likely to get much higher than 346.50, which is the minimum upside objective on the pattern. That is nowhere near all-time historic highs, but they think there's a good chance this market's going to attack and uh, potentially make new highs, like I said, for the spider. Yeah, more likely than not. I like what I see. It's a question of whether we get a little bit of a dip right away, and I mean right away, by the close today and follow through Monday, Tuesday, or not. If not, and you get follow through strength, we still have problems up ahead, and we're in an overbought conditions, and we just had a gap. All of these signs that you're probably going to have a little problem and turn back down for, again, just a very short dip, maybe the bottom of the red zone, and uh, nothing abnormal about that in a bull trend. Bull markets climb slower than bear markets drop. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to futures. We've got something whopper here. <coughs> Boy, I hope you um, listened to me yesterday in reference to gold. Well, we just have a little error. Bring all my charts back. Good, good, good. <laughs> this is gold. Yesterday, I harped about this bearish engulfing. Whopper of a down day today. The next day, slam dunk. Um, probably too much. As a matter of fact, look at this. It already got oversold the next day. Oh, my goodness. Gracious, great balls of fire. We were overbought yesterday at the high, helping generate this red bearish ER sell signal on yesterday's. And it's red also, a different color on candlestick charts. I don't use candlesticks that often. I will be. I'm going to be um, including Ninja Trader charts in the near future. And they'll probably be candlesticks and probably be concentrated on futures. They love to trade futures. I was a futures broker for 30 plus years, starting in 72. Started in the business as a runner in 71. Now, wow, that's a, that's a big shift all of a sudden. I think there could be a little more follow through the downside. My first downside objective probably mentioned yesterday was 1850, 1851, and maybe through this support zone somewhat. I kind of doubt it's going to get down all the way to seven, 1750. I don't expect that. But a minimum downside move, um, whoa, we're already halfway there. Wow. Um, to 1850. And now we're at 1880, basically. Enough said. Great start on a brand new signal yesterday. I also mentioned that we have two signals lately. Okay. I don't get them every day. Uh, silver. Break out to the downside. Looks like it's going to fall off some more, but the trend may have changed. The next big move would uh, tend to cement an uptrend, and that would be coming down to support somewhat. And we just barely got to some minor support today, but I'm talking back down into the approximate 2130 area. And if it holds, and it could very well hold, I think it will, and tries to make new or makes new highs for the whole trend here during the next few weeks, a month or two. That's a long term bull market. Next chart. Uh, ten year notes and bonds. As I've been saying, I expect that they're trying to make long term bottom formations. I haven't got a real good handle on exactly what they're doing at the moment. We have a big down day. And that probably is the underlying reason why the uh, indexes themselves. Um, dropped off that much on the opening but they're pretty resilient uh, at the moment coming down to 60 70 lower on the day on the spider now the dow, dow is down a half a point and the qqqs are down 280 they're approximately in line net change wise with the s p both of them today only um okay so yes i think it's going to drop off some more and i do think there's a chance of getting down to 12 and a half on the long bond, actually, this is the 10 year note. They look almost the same. Next chart, long bond, same commentary. Too bad I didn't get a sell signal. And we, and we didn't even get overbought. It was just simply resistance stopped it so far.
go back to tenure notes and look at that a little closer. And essentially the same thing can be said. And it did get overbought on the highest high of the rally. Okay, let's go through bonds again. And now, Coco. This head and shoulder top is looking really interesting. <coughs> this was not a bearish engulfing ER sell signal. It was simply a bearish engulfing on the high of the last shoulder, and the date was the January 30th. So the neckline slants downward, and the pattern is approximately two months, a month and a half in duration, which is a kind of a small to medium-sized head and shoulder. And this is a top. My minimum downside objective, if we get closer to the neckline, and it looks like we could or will, I'll take the measurement and give you a more accurate downside objective. But for the moment, this is going to be pretty close. Um, 2,300 or a little lower. Yeah, that's about right. And uh, next chart. Uh, Florida orange juice freeze situation, I believe. We're losing upside momentum. Currently, we're slightly higher. After today, we made another new high, but by a very small amount. Today's low is also damn close to yesterday's low, but not below it. Otherwise, we would have an outside trading range, and all I would need then, because we're overbought, is a lower close to get a red ER sell signal. Look how overbought this sucker got on the rally. 96 looks like. Huge. 96.35 to be exact. We uh, make a marker here for this indicator, the RSI, my custom ER RSI indicator. Um, next chart. It's going to come back down some, a lot probably. Um, post or pre, I meant prices to the uh, cold weather spell. E mini, same commentary as the SPY. No change. It is an index as well as a futures contract. And yes, we did get a buy signal on October 13th, the bottom of the damn bear market. We also have had some very profound buy signals along the line last year. Keep in mind this strategy finds these top and bottom turning points, but they don't happen very often. And I'm trying to have the turning points that are highlighted in red and green, very profound ones as, if possible. How do you pick only the really best ones, the really long-term good ones? That's the trick. Next. Um, sell signal a couple of weeks ago is still good, and we're slipping a little bit today, but I don't know. I've been very iffy on this for a few days. Uh, I'm going to go sideways for soybeans with a tinge of a bearish move. But the trend is up, and I wouldn't be surprised if it popped into new high ground. So what do I got? I got neutral. Next. Uh, one buy signal didn't quite work right, but when it did make new lows, it popped right back again like a ping pong ball underwater. And it's been up two days now. Higher highs, higher lows, and higher closes are current quotes. And a little, it's, little resistance is being pushed through, but we, we need to see another high close above the high of uh, last week. I think that was Friday of last week. That, <clears throat> that'll that uh, cement probably another rally uh, well up to 92 to 93. But the long-term trend seems to be in doubt. I'm neutral to slightly friendly short-term. Next, and that was live hogs. <clears throat> this is heating oil. We sold the top of the market. Three days later, we had another sell signal. This is a new low and likely a new low close since our ER sell signal smack dab on top of the damn market. There's a chance that this thing could make new lows for many months coming up in the next few weeks. That wouldn't surprise me. My expertise is picking turns. And when I can, I try to forecast how much higher and lower the market's going to go based on chart formations and support and resistance areas and a variety of other little tricks and the trade in 52 years. Uh, heating oil, obviously bearish, looking for support levels to fail, but they might, the market might bounce off them a little bit and then drop off. That's heating oil. Next. And that could be a really big bearish formation going backward one chart on heating oil. If we start trading below the tops here, uh, I'm sorry, bottoms, and that goes all the way back to April, that'll be a new low for damn near a year. And I'm assuming it will happen maybe late February or March. March is just before April. So 10 months, 11. 
that's a heck of a long period of time. Uh, most chart formations are well under a year in size, although they can be a lot bigger. I saw one that was 10 years, head and shoulder, dollar index, I think 1980s, next chart. Um, crude oil. We got a sell signal going down, new low, new low close, and now oversold in an area of support. What do you think? Probably going to hold here a little bit and bounce slightly a day or two. Not much more than that. A little more, a little less, but not a lot of time. Also, a small amount of bounce price. Uh, I'm going to, uh, it's just an educated, I don't have a lot to work with here. Uh, 77. And that's nothing. We're at 74, a little, a little under. Um, it could collapse. But the fact that you're oversold kind of tells me there's a bounce first and then new lows. This is very bearish. And we did sell it short a few days ago. And I think the R3 also may have gotten short. It came back for that retracement to the red dot. We also back here, I'm pointing out the second high in a broad double top formation on June 14th is a top of the market for months and months to come. That is a short sale up in the 111 area, and we're at 73. No comment. That is exactly the high day, and that's why I built the strategy. Okay, next chart. Now, platinum. We caught the top of the market, bearish engulfing. It was January 11th. Go back and listen to my recordings at the time. New low, new low close for the move down. We're short in the ballpark of uh, uh, 1,100, and we're down to 90 and 980. Not bad. What can I say? Well, we had a buy signal that failed. Um, it looked like it was going to work a little, but now a major top could be developing because this looks like a new low closing price for months. And all it has to do is drop a little bit more and close under that 973, 10, 15-ish level. Uh, and that could still happen today, probably on Monday. That is a very big downside long-term breakout. That doesn't mean you want to sell it short right there. Some people like to do that. It gets risky because guess what? We're getting close to oversold. And uh, I would prefer to sell a rally, maybe after the breakout to the downside, come down a little bit more and come back to here, 980. But I, I prefer to sell a rally and buy on oversold conditions and breaks. Next chart, sugar, up, up and away, overbought, warnings, 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 and now a new low for, the, for three days, a new low close for three to four days. And we're probably going to come down more than this. I'm guesstimating that it is going to be around 20 flat. We're 2119. $1,120 a, a dollar, I think, on this thing. Um, I haven't traded sugar for a long time. Next. Overbought in the last few days. That's the warning. Today, down we go. Dropping into support. Very good possibility to come down to about 160. This is coffee. Long-term bear market. What's the big picture? Over many months, lower lows, lower highs with one exception, but it didn't hold. Right away, that failed and got overbought, overbought at the same time. But definitely lower lows, obviously, profoundly in the last few months. A buy signal that worked okay for a couple, couple of weeks, not great. And then tested and then finally broken, oversold again. Where's this rally been? Right almost up against an old low in July resistance. So I think that's probably it. Got overbought. I think we could make a new low for the whole trend in the next few weeks. Next chart, and that was coffee. Next chart is wheat. Boring, boring, boring. Next chart, high-grade copper had tons of warning that this was going to happen. 
I mentioned that it's likely to happen pretty quickly and fast and sharp and yeah, yeah, sort of to last week or so. But today is a new low and a new low close since the overbought condition and it's damn near oversold already. Remember, this is a bull trend that started in July. Unfortunately, we didn't get a buy signal on the very bottom, but guess what? The next major bottom in September, yep, we picked up a buy signal. So I'm looking for a, a dribble, so to speak, back down to uh, 3.9, 320-ish, something in those that ballpark area, and maybe in the trading range down to 3.72. Could even be a hair lower, but not likely. This one's my best shot. 372 what uh two to three weeks yep something like that uh hopefully it'll stick around oversold maybe bounce off once or twice and then get oversold in the bullish engulfing we're on our way back up i like the looks of this but we have more weakness coming first long-term bullish short-term bearish next is um <clears throat> natural gas ng boy oh boy it keeps on sinking it keeps on creating oversold conditions and fairly substantial ones too. We're at 16. That's a very low number. I would not sell a short. I keep saying that and it keeps going down and I keep being wrong. But this is similar to another chart that we saw the same thing going up. And all of a sudden it went down very sharply for several days. Exactly what I think this is about to do go up very sharply for several days. Uh, I don't know, three and a half, maybe even four. But I haven't seen it start yet, so it could still keep dribbling down. But I don't want to sell it short. Very dangerous. Next, live cattle. A bullish and looking for higher levels. Don't see anything wrong here. We're not overbought. Looks like we have more elbow room. <coughs> bringing more history. These are new high prices. I didn't realize that until early it's two years since we've seen these prices. My, is that a historic high of some sort? I'll have to get to that later. So I got to say still up, but maybe I'll have more to say about that in the next week when I do a little more research. Next chart, bean oil, new low, new low close, big boring market for the most part. Almost oversold, not quite. We did catch the blow of the move back in early December. Great rally for a couple, three weeks. Remember, my trading system is not necessarily built to pick turning points for a year, which it does occasionally, because I don't know that at the time it turns red and green. My expectation is definitely that it will rally or go down for a few days or more. Could be weeks, could be even a month or two. But again, I really don't have the expectation most of the time that October 13th bullish engulfing for the, the October low of last year is, was going to be at the time it happened super incredibly bullish long term. But that's exactly what it's going to be, I think. That's going to be the lowest low for I don't know how, I hope forever. <laughs> Next. Bear trend line, it's not a neckline and it's behaving like one, but that's okay. They They do. And we just simply have to close above it in order to break out to the upside. It looks like it's trying to do it in the last few days. It might do it at any time. For a couple of months, the lows have been rising and the highs are around the same level, but the line keeps creeping downward. So I think this is going to blast off through that bear trend line next week. Next, And that is corn. Next is gold. Whammo. We started with it. I told you about the bearish engulfing yesterday. I was very adamant about it. Luckily, we have a huge down day today. It's working great. Obviously, people, you're lowering your stops to protect a profit of some sort. This is a chance to lock in a no-loss trade under normal market circumstances. Gaps are a big problem. Next is going to be a quick review of Forex. Um, euros, big down day today. Whoops, 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 whoops. I got the wrong cursor here. Just a second. Give me a moment. New low closing price. All of a sudden, 
for the previous couple of weeks. We, just two days ago, had a new high close for months. But guess what? The prices turn yellow. I keep telling you, yellow is a warning, just like a traffic light, that it's going to turn either red or green. And uh, in some countries, it actually does turn yellow before it turns green. Not in the United States, but whatever. Um, so I think we're about to make a lower low for a month or two. Um, drop back into support and then try to turn right back up again. I don't see this yet as a major top. There's a slim chance of it. Look where we are and where we have been. The market's currently trading at 108, uh, 111. So right about here on the uh, white line, my horizontal cursor line. That's smack dab against substantial resistance to lows in early 20. That's 2020. After that, it went up and created a giant head and shoulder top, <coughs> which didn't have a classic breakout, but it ended up working extremely well and went down a lot more than the minimum downside objective. So we got to new lows for many years, I think decades, actually. I can't draw that chart for the moment. I'm not going to. A little below, 5% below par, which is one to one. So after that, we've come all the way just back up to 110 or 10% and got overbought against long-term historical resistance. There's a chance that this failure to hold a new high in the euro is very significant. And look how quickly, again, we are closing probably below a whole mess of closes, approximately the last two weeks, maybe even three. Yeah, clo close to that. And you would expect the next symbol to have the exact same opposite, and that's the dollar index. Oversold at the bottom. We had two buy signals that didn't work. Unfortunately, we didn't get one at the bottom at, the, at this point. So I'm turning friendly uh, on the dollar index and a little bearish on the euro with uh, potentials of much longer term potentials as far as this swing turn that we saw in the last two days seems to have on the surface. Uh, it could be very bullish, I can't quite tell yet. Next chart, and I'm gonna fly through these. Nothing particularly profound. We did pick almost the bottom of the break, looking for probably a little bit more rally. Next, this one's the Aussie to the US dollar. Failure to hold new highs, boom, reversed right away. Looking for a little bit more downside correction, short term. Next, US dollar to Canada. Um, we have a we picked the top of the market back in October to the day. Um, we have a very big sideways trading range developing. Neutral, can't say much about that. Uh, obviously, bear trend. But recent oversold conditions and almost another one a couple of days ago tell me that this thing is going to rally a little bit short term. And that's the best I can say. Maybe up to another test of uh, 0.94. Next. Um, breaking away from resistance, but in the process getting a little overbought for the second day. Don't run after it on the upside. Buy it when it dips back down to a little lower than today's low maybe in the mid bottom third of yesterday's trading range and possibly a little lower than that. Next chart. Uh, and that's it. That's a Euro to the British pound. Lastly, the sectors. Remember we're having uh, a lot of strength at the moment of correction in the stock market indexes, but the sectors should on the average represent the overall stock market indexes. There's going to be obviously individual characteristics about the gold mining stocks or retail stocks or banking stocks because of the idiosyncrasies in that sector. But in general, we're supposed to see up moves or up trends and not real big bearish patterns of failures. Those sectors that don't look real good and haven't been acting real good are kind of really in jeopardy of having a big slam dunk downward when the stock market has a big correction, which ain't happening in the next day or two, I don't think. Anyway, this is overbought now, looking good. Bull trend, broken out of everything. What can I say? Don't chase it up. Just like I'm saying in this stock market indexes, wait for a correction. My last bearish signal only lasted a day and it, and it got destroyed a week later, uh, which is a very bullish indication. So 
I'm proud of this one back here. We almost got the exact high day on April 20th of 22. Gigantic bear market after that. But nothing really great lately. Next symbol is IYE. I'm just going to have no comment unless there's something really important to say here. Overbought. Don't chase it up. Wait for a retracement. This is a head and shoulder bottom. We got October 13th. It looks just like the S&P. What sector is this? I don't even know what the heck that means. Don't care. I'm a technician. I don't care what the name of it is. Ooh, a new bearish engulfing after an exhaustion gap to the upside yesterday. Oh, boy. Now we're going to come back down to the neckline, a little below 135 in the next several days, next week. <clears throat> if we start closing above today's high, it could explode up to 150, 155 very quickly. This shows me that it's trying a lot to turn around. I don't think it's going to be the beginning of a bear market or a bear move or a large move down. There's too much support underneath. The pattern looks too good. It's just like the other stock market head and shoulder bottoms in the S&P and the uh, QQQ. And, and the Dow, I'll have to bring that into the picture as well. Uh, the Russell's not quite the same, but it just broke out to the upside a couple of days ago fabulously. I didn't spend any time on the Russell. So bearish, no, I should say correction, not really bearish. Short-term swing down. Get down to 135, give or take, and let's see what we find. Hopefully overbought conditions. Hopefully maybe a bullish engulfing green. Next chart, that's great. Upside exhaustion gap yesterday, got slightly overbought. Looks like it's going to correct downward a little bit more, just like I'm saying in the stock market indexes. Longer term, I like the looks of this. Next. Oh, another bearish engulfing red ER sell signal on the top of the market so far. It's only been the same day. So, and it's not down very much. But I have to say the same thing about this, except there's a lot of support really close underneath this market. It doesn't have far to go until it starts mushing around sideways. So I can't expect a really big break here, frankly. Maybe it's going to come off to about 34 and a half. It's 36 and a half right now. That's the best I can say, 34 and a half. And it would still be good looking on a long-term basis. And it might be oversold. Next, XLI, new highs, new high closes, minor failure so far, inside trading range, didn't actually get overbought, not even on the previous rally. It's a price range breakout only, kind of feeble, slightly reactionary, but looking for higher levels pretty soon. Next. Ah, big problem on this one. We're way far away from making any new highs for a few months. We're not that far away from making new lows for a few months. <coughs> I had a sell signal that didn't work, but it ended up topping out to a degree so far anyway. We got overbought three different times on three different rally highs, and now we're well below those lows. This looks like it could start to break down pretty good. This looks like it start, could attack 125 and not hold. We have a sell signal smack dab on top of this rally. That was highs for a few months before and ever since. The date was uh, November 14th of 22. Hmm. Um, GDX, that's the gold index. Next. No surprise. Downside breakout on a breakaway gap. Now, this is not an exhaustion gap. It's a classic breakaway gap because it wasn't a trading range that all of a sudden it's popped out of. So the gap may very well be closed in a few days on a rally. But that's about it. I mean, if we got back up to 1340, uh, 3140, uh, I would be very much interested in a short sale. We're not oversold, so it could easily drop off a little bit more in the next day or two. And we're not back to any significant support quite yet, just barely touching it. But it could easily drop off, I don't know, 2990, 2980, and even down to 2840. That's very interesting. That's good. Uh, it correlates, of course, with the gold futures uh, sell signal. OIH. My bearish engulfing at the top of the market is still good. Yesterday looked very encouraging because it was a new low, new low close for a week. And today we popped back up but couldn't go anywhere. And now we're just slightly higher. 
So I kind of like what I see. I wish I would see a new low and a new low close for a month real soon. And that's exactly what I expect next. And that was OIH. Yep. XLB now had gotten overbought, starting to dribble back. No sell signal per se. Looks like it could fall off a little bit more, but I want to buy it on a dip. Waiting for signals. We'll see what we get. We got one on the top of the market for months prior and months, months, months afterwards, back on April 21. A couple of short term, and that's okay. There's good money in that. Buy signals on the way down, and they happen like that a lot. Uh, this buy signal didn't work, and this one did. This sell signal did work for a week or four days or so. Remember, anytime you see green or red bars, the ER1 trade got into it the day they happened. There's a scalp version, which gets out by the end of the day on purpose. And then there's an overnight, which may keep the trade for a lot longer. But that gets, ER1 gets into the trade the day of the trade. Signal, sorry. ER3 gets into the trade within the next few days and not the same day that the green or red bar occurs. So I like a retracement to get into the to trade with an ER3 only, and then ER1 just does it the moment it happens. Next symbol is uh, XLV. Nothing to say. XLE as an Edward. Also, nothing to say. Bear signal worked for a day. ER1 must have made some good money, almost positively, for a day, day and a half. Nothing else. XLU. <coughs> Oversold slightly, but a downtrend and a downside breakout. Maybe it's going to get a little more oversold before it bounces. I want to go short on a rally, but it may be after slight new lows. <coughs> XT, I'm sorry, ITB overbought. Looks like it may have gapped up yesterday. Exhaustion gap, if that's true. And now coming down. I think it's going to come down to support. Uh, I don't think with the long-term trend is in jeopardy. Next, XB, excuse me, XBE, again, overbought. I think it's going to start sliding. It's having a lot of trouble staying above a new high since August. It made it, but it didn't, it didn't keep it. And that's what we call a false breakout. And they can they can be very tricky. It looks good for a bit. You know, maybe hours, maybe a day. And that's about it. So this looks a little reactionary in an overbought condition. Um, but the long-term trend is just kind of sideways, neutral. VNQ. Almost the same commentary. Except we did buy the bottom. Caught that sucker on October 13th. That's just great trade. Great signal. Next. XHB. Two more to go after this. Overbought, look for a retracement, buy it on a dip. XRT, second to last. Same comment, exhaustion strength, exhaustion gap, two overbought, very high levels, high 80s. You don't see 90s that often, and the high 80s are very overbought. That may be the highest RSI you're going to see for many months. Not that it won't stay in an uptrend. I'm just stating there the speed at which it made new highs lately was profound. Now, the last one is XME, overbought, looking for retracement. Look how many times I've said overbought mostly in these sectors. Typical, but the breakouts and the trend lines and all that other stuff are different. But the fact that they cause the market or follow the market, whatever, uh, up lately uh, is just great. That's fine. Totally expected. Last look at the spider. Let's see what it's doing. We have, uh, we're lingering around yesterday's lows. And we have made uh, some damage done to today's price action. Okay, so there's the end of yesterday and the beginning of today on the big down gap. Rallied, closed the breakaway gap to the downside. So there's no gap now. Uh, rallied, okay, broke down but didn't go anywhere, and then made new highs all the way back up to almost exactly unchanged. Topped out, kind of looks like a head and shoulder, doesn't it? 
and drop like a rock here. Now we're testing the support at the low of the day area. And I'm not surprised. I thought this, you know, I expected, I told, I told you yesterday. So that's fine. Now keep in mind the QQQ still have a small gap to close. The low today early on, like the spider, closed a lot of the gap. The Qs have been the strongest lately. I think it's going to continue to be the strongest lately. It's going to go up the fastest, get to objectives the quickest, break through resistance the easiest. So keeping an eye on the Q for months to come, I think is very profound. You guys have a great weekend. Have a profitable day. Signing off, Stan Ehrlich, thank you.